Rafa. Welcome to the Let's Talk Loyalty Offices. Thank you. I'm super <laughs> excited. Super, super excited. Honestly, I know you've been listening to our show for a long time. So first and foremost, I'm so grateful. <laughs> fun. Oh, thank you. I think I said to you, we are over 600 episodes and definitely a lot of gray hair. Uh, but knowing that you were listening when we first connected uh, about a year ago, yeah. actually, um, was really, uh, really meaningful for me. So thank you for listening. Uh, thanks for your loyalty. And obviously, you're in Dubai for a fleeting visit. So we couldn't miss the opportunity to bring you into our co-working spaces. I can't quite say that we own these offices. Um, but yeah, tell us a bit about yourself, Rafa. You've been in loyalty quite a while. So just for people who don't know you, tell them a bit about what you do. Yeah, it's been almost 14 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. Gotta say I got it by accident. Uh -huh. So used to work back in the days for Aeromexico in the airline business. And at the time, it was a process of transforming the, the airline because mm -hmm. it was government-owned. So yeah. during the privatization, they bring the consultants. And the biggest transformational project at the time was to spin off the loyalty program Wow! and turn into an independent business unit. So yes. uh, I think I was really lucky at the time because the ones that approached with the idea and the, and the proposals to do so was Amia. Okay. Having been through the experience with Air Canada. Yeah. And I think I was really lucky of being in a company that opened to the idea and mm. then another partner coming in with the know-how mm. and the investment. So we ended up like creating a business on its own that was worth almost a billion dollars. Wow. <laughs> so it was, it was crazy. I mean, going down the road, you can argue things that were done well and not, but I was exposed to a full loyalty company from from the get. -go. Yeah, yeah. And I think that like basically shaped my career. Yeah. Then I went off to study an MBA, and when coming back, I started a tech company uh, for uh, enabling small businesses with loyalty okay. capabilities. Yeah. That then morphed into a rewards platform that was used for incentive programs for okay. employees yeah. and to like. Uh, be able to redeem experiences, rewards mm. in in larger programs. Okay, a business then we sold, mm. and then I started partnering with old mates from from Mania and from this project in uh, Mexico called Pro Primer in, in a new uh, consulting agency called On Point Loyalty. Yes, yeah. And from there, I started like doing strategy transformation loyalty projects with airlines uh, with. Uh, casinos, hotels, retailers. Mm. So then I turned from being, after uh, being an executive operating programs and yeah. uh, being the entrepreneur, then I changed to being the consultant and be able to. <laughs> <laughs> so I am the weird like profile that's been like, I'm three type of, totally. type of, of people in, 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 in one in my experience. Yeah. Uh, did I, I had a fantastic like time with, with the consulting projects, but uh, at the time COVID came with the pandemic, yeah. most of our yeah. clients were in the travel industry. Yeah. And you can imagine what happened at the moment. We know very well. Yeah. Everything dried up. Yeah. And I think uh, the entrepreneurship, like Spark, came back. Yes. And opportunity at the time. And I switched to another industry, okay. went into venturing a, a, another startup okay. in, in the pet tech world. Okay. But not so far from customer engagement and tech development and relationship with with clients. Mm -hmm. So did that for for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and uh, afterwards I got the opportunity to get into Mastercard. With I didn't know they had a very large consulting arm. Yeah. And they invited me to to be part of the team mm -hmm. and to help them develop the the loyalty capabilities in in the space. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing the past two years, uh, leading the the consult loyalty and customer centricity practice on yeah. on the consulting side. Amazing, amazing. So first of all, I didn't realize this is a billion dollar uh, business that the Aero Mexico managed to create. So I'm still processing that. That's amazing. That's uh, I don't have that on my CV. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I might need your consulting help in the background. So now still based in Mexico. I know uh, you're originally from Mexico and you've been on two months paternity leave. So uh, congratulations on that. Thank How's you. the paternity leave gone over the last while? Great. I mean, it's one of these 
magical benefits that this company yeah. grants you. Yeah. Honestly, they went overboard with that. Yeah. But also like gave me the, the chance to be like outside of Mexico. So we yeah. decided to move to, to Cape Town, to South Africa for a couple of months. Yeah. And did for the matter of like experiencing that city, that amazing country, the mm. nature setting, the people, everything. Yeah. Uh, but especially we targeted to be in a market I've been researching a lot. And I think yeah. really thankful for your content that I put it on the map because I didn't have any clue that South Africa is so well developed yeah. in the loyalty space. Yeah. So we had the chance to be part of the uh, international loyalty conference there yes, yeah. and meet a lot of people. And as a client in really two months, got like, signed to eight loyalty programs, saw <laughs> them like working everywhere. Yeah. And I was really blown away what this like yeah. particular market is doing. So yeah research a lot, learn a lot uh, while having fun as well. So Totally. And you were still responding to emails, presenting at Amanda's conference. So yeah. shout out to Amanda <laughs> Cromhout for hosting us both Thank down you, there. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And I've always said it, and I'm sure you've heard it on the show, Rafa. I really do believe that South Africa punches above its weight, and um, perhaps because of the demographics, actually, because it it is, I think we heard coming through actually in the conference, it's part of the household budget for people. It's not just a nice luxury for frequent flyers. It's totally different. It's ingrained in everyday life and very mature. Yeah. So it's super fun with yeah. that. No, for me, it was I was impressed to see the level of development and depth of the programs. Yeah. But I think more so than anything, the purpose of the programs. Mm. So they really cater their programs to things that really matter to their customers. Totally. To make it useful and, and, yeah. and people react to that. Yeah, course. super relevant, yeah. super relevant. So we've learned loads. Uh, we had a great time um, down in South Africa. And I know you're heading back to Mexico now, back to your MasterCard role. So we're coming to the end of 2024, of course. And I know it is crazy. And I guess, you know, when I think about 2025, like we're going to be doing loads, of course, as Let's Talk Loyalty and Loyalty TV, lots of change. But from a loyalty perspective, have you been kind of noticing anything that, you know, whether it's something like AI, I mean, we all know the hype. Well, what are you thinking about as you go back into this role, big year ahead? Um, what should loyalty professionals be thinking about for 2025? Mm -hmm. Big question, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think, as you mentioned, like the big topics are around like data utilization, hyper personalization. Yeah. AI comes like supporting that. I mean, people talk about AI, AI, but what does that mean? Totally. It's really like like targeting the mass use of data or processes to be able to like make the most out of that in mm -hmm. the most efficient way. So I think hyper personalization is one of them. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for companies nowadays to, yes. to use what they have in, 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 in store around data. So building their data strategies. And mm -hmm. I think it's, if you were to tell me, that's the cornerstone of the rest of the strategy. If you yeah. manage to understand where you are, mm -hmm. how your customers are being uh, behaving and feel and, mm -hmm. and the, their likes, that's that's great and how you like process that and enable that yeah. into reality which yeah. is the tricky part for me no? so that's one i would say the other one would be uh creating the emotional mm. layers on top of the transactional programs mm. which uh, uh companies are yet to like further yeah. work on yeah um Membership programs. Mm. Oh, a favorite topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's so much that really programs can fund and yeah. able to get to rewards and start creating the whole like yeah. earn burn ecosystem and, yeah. and, and, and the traction in the programs. But in, in how much the companies are working to create a meaningful like redemption mm. experience and giving the customers more uh, options in, in the way that you can speed up that via membership mm -hmm. or even uh, tipping on, on on other type of benefits and, and, and services that can like enhance the value offering that you have in your own program. Yeah. We actually been working recently with like 
a lot of companies on designing and building the, mm. the, the, the partnership and mem uh, membership strategies. Yeah. So I think that's going to keep on mm. coming. Mm. Uh, but I think the big question for me is not what's coming and what's the trend and what should we be working on. So I think I will put it this way. What it's not to be disrupted. Okay. And what should we double down in. Okay. Because we tend to go with the trends and the flow and say, hey, AI, gamification, mm. crypto, blah, blah, blah. And we come like, mm. oh my God. But for me, it's now the switch from the loyalty program mentality into okay. the customer centricity strategy. Yeah. And that's honestly yeah. having the chance of seeing so many mm. companies around the world, different industries. That point is missing in 95% of the cases. I agree. Yeah. So for me, it's basically, as we were saying, like putting the foundations on your like, yeah. customer life cycle strategy, mm. where you would like to take them, mm. tapping into the information. Mm. And on top of that, like be able to start like creating the behavioral mm. incentives, the loyalty rewarding program, the mm. customer experience, mm. the and, and integrating that into all the the, the omni-channel customer mm. experience yeah. uh, servicing uh, strategy that you have. But for that, I think the main thing is that companies are missing a chief executive in yeah. the strategy or in the big table, mm -hmm. like being able to paste the mm. strategy of the business mm -hmm. and the customer voice mm. in order to be able to be the owner of the customer. So for me, that's the big thing yeah. that companies should be taking like care of. Very well said. And um, actually, you reminded me just last week, I registered a new domain name because I was talking with so many people with exactly your insights. And I just registered leadwithloyalty.com because I feel like that's the piece that's missing. You know, it's like, as you said, it's the C-suite leadership having the loyalty perspective and us as loyalty practitioners developing and delivering everything. But there has to be a lead and a mindset around loyalty, first of all. Like, how do we want to be loyal to our customers? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, whatever technology, whatever, it's all available. And I will say, of course, MasterCard is a very well-kept secret, <laughs> which is never a good marketing strategy, but we've joked about it before on the show. So the loyalty platform, again, we're not going to get into the detail now, yeah. but you guys have amazing tech. Then, of course, your whole consulting practice, global loyalty consulting practice as well. So I didn't even know you guys did all the design piece. So we'll give you guys a plug and we'll make sure if anybody is watching this clip that they can reach out to you, Rafa, and connect sure. with you uh, when you go back to Mexico. Yeah, no, and I think that even the concept of loyalty, mm -hmm. it's limited. Yes, yeah. And we've struggled a lot with our clients whenever we come and they initially right off the bat think, ah, you're the guys that do the pro. Do the points, yeah. yeah. And this is <laughs> yeah why we are like yeah. working very strong to shift the name into the customer centricity part. Amazing. So yeah, I think that will be a big trend for next year. Wonderful. Okay, Rafa Martinez, thank you so much, and let's talk loyalty for joining us in our offices. Super happy to be. Here. Thank you.